CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Hello and a warm welcome to this brand new episode of CNBC TV 18 Weekender. On the show today, we've traveled all the way to Puducherry, although I still prefer calling it Pondy. And we're here to meet a man who spent the last four decades designing accessories that have in turn crafted a brand that's become synonymous with Indian made fashion. He's a self confessed designer turned businessman who began with a two member workshop right here in Pondy, but whose business has spread to over 23 countries worldwide. Pablo can swim really well. With that, let's step into the high design factory and say hello to its president and founder, Dilip Kapoor. Mr. Dilip Kapoor, thank you so much for speaking with us on CNBC TV 18 Weekender. It's so good to have you on the show. Pleasure being here. You know, before we begin, I'm not sure how many know this about you, uh, but you're a bit of a reluctant businessman, aren't you? When you started out, you wanted to be a designer and you got into business, the business aspects of the kind of work you do here at High Design, only much later. And it was all drawn out of this love to actually put out handcrafted products as opposed to mass-produced leather accessories that were pretty much the norm back in the 70s and 80s. So in a sense, you are the most hipster of your field, so to speak, in the industry. A reluctant businessman. Um, I think when I started, I, uh, doing business was the last thing I wanted to do, really. I came here to be part of Oroville and uh, making bags was a hobby. Loved working with leather, touching it, feeling it, designing it was something that I liked. Because pretty much what I saw in leather all across, especially in India but all across, was very synthetic, very flat, very boring. And what I loved was the natural leather. Leather itself is a beautiful natural material. and. I, you know, I was very upset that, you know, they would just take leather and flatten it out, make it look like plastic. In 2010, um, you know, your filings with the, with the registrar of companies says 11 crore was your turnover and in 2014 that went all the way up to 97 crore. We're talking about what is nearly a tenfold rise in business. Um, from a reluctant businessman, how did that come about? What was the magic really that worked during these four years specifically, if you will? I, I think uh, the magic around that time would be Indian women. Uh, suddenly Indian women became bolder, they started working, they started you know, coming out of colleges and started working. And all this time they always thought of high design bags as being crude and rough and too natural in a way, too natural. And suddenly Indian women, with the opening to the world, they started understanding also that what you want is not a copy of a bag, which is what everything else was. But you'd li you know, there was something special about an orig originality and an original bag and having really nice, you know, natural looking leather which looked as good as anything you could find anywhere in the world. And I think that's what happened. Suddenly we went from, when you said we were 11 crores, uh, we were 80% selling only to men. You know, essentially men that went abroad or abroad, selling only abroad, not in India. Uh, and then when the Indian market started booming and we were, we were just going crazy, we were making shops everywhere and and the Indian women just started to fall in love with our bags. And we ended up, by the end, within four years, we went from 20% of the business being women to within India, 60% of our business being women. And that's the transformation that happened. Wow, so the Indian women, women, the, the Indian woman has really been your big customer during this week. They have, they have. And interestingly enough, I'm guessing it was around this time also, and more recently really, that you also developed a very interesting product diversification strategy. You began essentially as a handbag manufacturer, of course, the designer before that. So you've designed these handbags, you've manufactured them, and you sold just bags. Now, what you are essentially today is a lifestyle player. You design leather products for men, women, your audiences have spread out. Um, across genders, of course. 
what really was the rationale behind expanding so much? I, I think, uh, you know, as I told you right away in the beginning when we, when we started, um, we, we were very clear that we reflected a certain way of looking at things. Um, there are two ways of designing. One is you just copy whatever everybody's done is best. The other is you create something which comes from your own lifestyle, from your own culture. So I think great, great design has to be something that comes out of yourself. So whatever we did reflected how we believed life should be. So it reflects the lifestyle and I think in that to us what's really important is, is craftsmanship, it's very important, ecology and health. I mean we don't want to create unhealthy leathers that create cancer. You know, we were always clear on that. And we love natural. And the last thing was we want innovation. We don't want to copy anyone. I think you'll never find a high design bag that looks like somebody else's bag. Because it doesn't. It looks like a high design bag. Just take me to the thinking behind uh, your Go Slow campaign and how you went about boosting that big USP that's seen you develop your products in the last 40 years. So even your campaign talks about that, right? Go slow, never mind, you know, never mind large production lines. It's all a labor of love and even if it takes time, that's fine. Is, is, isn't that the theme of your campaign? That's really? right. I mean, see, an average bag in China takes less than 45 minutes to make. Uh, an average bag in Europe takes two and a half hours to make. An average hiding and bag, you know, call me stupid or whatever, <laughs> takes 11 and a half hours to make. So it's dumb, but you know, it, it's, it is different. And it's all great. It's been, it's been great going for you for the last four decades now in terms of actually handcrafting your, pros your products and actually putting in a labor of love into it all. But I have to ask you, you know, back then competition was pretty much non-existent as far as this market is concerned. This market today contributes to 70% of your revenues, you know, even though you came in as late as the year 2000, which is, which is, you know, is a stark contrast to your initial entry in the year 1978. But with competition from big brands slowly creeping in, what's the strategy you're going to adopt now in terms of actually battling this competition while continuing to carve a niche for yourself in the kind of work you do? Um, remember, number one, we, were, we started abroad where there were hundreds of brands. So we're used to competition. You know, we didn't start, I mean, when you started telling me, it's only now that we are very strongly in India. In the year 2000, only 8% of my market was India. So we're used to being abroad, we're used to being part of a lot of, a lot of competition. So it doesn't bother us. Um, what we find is that you need to be clear about who you are and not be a me too. If you're a me too, you do need to worry because if you're a me too in India, you're being used to copying every brand in Europe and then that brand comes here, suddenly you, people can see that you're just a copy. But we don't have that issue. We are very clear about our nation, we are very clear about our values, we are very clear, you know, every product of ours has to be handcrafted, has to be ecological, has to look natural, and has to be innovative. So if you're there, then you have your own little space. You know, we're not a bag for everybody, we're a bag for a particular type of person. All right. Well, you heard it, the man himself, he's talking about products, product diversification, how he doesn't want to be a me too uh, product, so to speak, and a me too company. But that's Dilip Kapoor for you. We'll have a slip into a very short break, but on the other side, we'll talk about High Design's expansion strategies and where they plan on taking the business from here onwards. Keep watching CNBC TV 18. CNBC TV 18 Weekender.